right. Thank you so much, Lindy, uh, for those uh, headlines there. Carl, welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's, it's good been to a while. be here. We owe each other a cup of coffee. Well, I think you wrote to me, let's have tea, when we were making peace <laughs> after all that uh, Facebook wars that we were involved in. Listen, when I, when I come to Devon, I've not been in Devon in a while. I assume you're still based there. I will make sure I, I, I meet Well, you. I'm actually now based... Are you based here now? I'm based mostly here in Johannesburg so because I'm no working excuse. in the office of the Secretary General. I see. I wanted to ask you, what are, what are, what's keeping you occupied these days? I, I see that you speak a lot for, for the veterans at some point, and now there's mm. the RET thing, but generally, what's keeping you busy? What keeps me busy is working for the Secretary General of the ANC, Comrade Ace Magashule. I'm a manager in his office. I see. So that's what I'm doing. So every day I drive my little polo to <laughs> the Tuli house and I go and do my work there. That, that must be serious work. Please, please, please uh, uh, get him to come and visit us, uh, Carl. Please. You know, uh, it, there, there's so much that's going on, mm -hmm. particularly in the movement from, from a point of view of determining what is the best way forward. I think yes. everybody, and you'll agree with me, is... is, is, is is in agreement that something has to be done different, something has to change in order for, for the lives of our people to change. Do, do you agree overall in that sentiment that, well, I absolutely that there's something agree. that needs to, to change in absolutely. the way that things are happening? And I think that an important part of what must change is mm. that we must bring unity in the African National Congress. Mm. But it has to be unity that is based on principle. You know, mm. it cannot be something out there let me use the IT term up in the cloud. Or, or amorphous. It can't be amorphous, yeah. JJ. It has to be based on the principles of changing our people's lives. And when we talk about changing our people's lives, it has to be economic transformation. Yeah. That's why you hear me talking all the time about radical economic transformation. Yeah. We'll get to that, but are you worried about the divisions that are in the, uh, the ends? I mean, if you look at the, 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 the path towards Nazareth, it was quite ugly. I mean, the things that people said about each other, you know, were, were truly bad. And I'm, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be contestation. But some of those things then become embedded in the psyche of the people. In other words, when, when Nazareth has come and gone, some of that bitter taste in their mouth seems to remain. Secondly, there are a lot of people who are saying, this looks like a marriage of convenience. Uh, if you look at how the top six is and so on. What's your assessment about whether or not we are over the hangover of Nazareth. Well, look, I think we're making progress. As you say, it was a very tough contestation. Mm. And I think one of the most serious problems mm. that I had with that contestation is the role that money played. That was alien to the AIDS. We shouldn't have had money playing the role that it played at the 54th National Conference. Now we must work together. Yeah. And I can see that there is an effort to work together, but as I say to you, yeah. you cannot work together on the basis of some amorphous yeah. idea of unity. It has to be unity on the basis of principle. And you know, JJ, where do you find the principle? You can, in a political organization such as the ANC, yeah. find the principle in its history. Yeah. And the history starts in 1912 when the ANC said land is the central issue. You remember that? Yeah. Secondly, you must go to the latest decisions that the ANC took at its last 54th yeah. national conference. And there you have it, radical economic transformation resolutions that yeah. have been taken, expropriation of land without compensation, the nationalization of the South African Reserve Bank, and the transformation of our financial sector so that it will serve our people. Yeah. Those are issues that will truly change the lives of our people. Yeah. And the most important thing is, we must make sure that the majority of black people, especially African people, will be able to be in the commanding heights of the South African economy. They are not. Yeah. The statistics tell us that white monopoly capital is still in control. And that means, as our longest serving president, President Owa Tambo said, Liberation will never be complete until there's economic liberation. And yeah. that is what the struggle Would is about. Would you agree, now. though, and it's, it's, it's good that you raised the issue of land and you traced it back to 1912, because, in fact, it is the key reason why the ANC was formed. 
Yes. Because a year after it was formed, you know what happened in the 1913 land exactly. act and what have you. It was not a beginning, but it was a, almost a culmination of land theft at its height and institutionalized, mm. etc. Perfected then by apartheid, etc., etc. Do you think, though, that we made a misstep at Codessa? And I know that in, after 30 years, all of us are clever <laughs> by hindsight. We're not yeah. at Khodeski, we're not at uh, Kempton Park, you know. But we, we can look back so that we don't repeat the same mistakes. Land was not at the center of the outcome of Codessa. You know, JJ, I'm old enough, you can see the gray beard, that I was actually there yeah. at Codessa. I was yeah. one of the junior members. Yeah. So I had little to do with really pushing the decisions. Yeah. But what I do remember is that I think we compromised far too much Absolutely. on the issue of Absolutely. land. Mm. We also compromised far too much on the general issue of the property clauses. And we introduced those sunset clauses. Yeah, and the now sunset I'm clauses with are that. still with us, JJ. Absolutely. You remember? Up to this day, we still have sunset clauses. That's very unfortunate. And the land issue has put us back. Yeah. We shouldn't have done what we've done. But my biggest concern is that we had an opportunity in this last 25 years yeah. to change it. That and opportunity and we're, we're too relaxed. And too relaxed no, no, about that compromise. That opportunity and came when we had a two-thirds majority under President Thabo Mbeki. We didn't use it. We wasted that opportunity. And we introduced the whole yeah. gear policy, which did not change anything fundamental yeah. in terms of our economic policy. Now we are faced with a situation where we have to battle to change those particular clauses in the Constitution that is impeding us. Yeah. And you see, now we must start thinking, how will we build a two-thirds majority? Must we make alliances with other political parties? Yeah. We can go on It looks on. like the only way to go. And it's interesting you raised the issue that happened under President Mbeki, that we failed to use our two-thirds majority mm. then. But it got worse under President Zuma. You, won't you agree that, in fact, not only did we fail right, to use our two-thirds when we had it under Mbeki, but under Zuma, on two occasions, we voted against a land resolution that talked about land without expropriation. And I know that it was because we, we had not been to co co conference, we had not been to, to, this, the, to the policy conference, etc. But that can be an excuse if, if you look at why we were formed in the first place in 1912, the Freedom Charter accentuated... But what I think you do. must understand the context, ne? especially yeah. when you look at the latter part of President Zuma's presidency. Yeah. You will remember at the last sonar that he addressed... The one yeah. that he was supposed to be addressed, he was robbed of. <laughs> but anyhow, <laughs> but the last owner that he did address, yeah. he was raising the issue of land and the expropriation of yeah. land. And, and you saying black parties must unite. And yes. So, yes. But that was too late also, in the day, Carl. No, 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 listen, listen. Yeah. He was making suggestions, creative suggestions, okay. on how we can deal with it, including that we could possibly make alliances with other political parties. And you remember that he was slapped down. No, we won't do it. Yeah. But eventually, if we want to push through the current changes that we want to make to the Constitution, yeah. we will have to make alliances. You think so there's no political will uh, overall? Forget about it. Let's pack the Zuma thing. We'll come okay. to that. But do you think there was less political will on the issue of the land? Not only before the conference, but even after the conference, Carl, you still had to be led by the nose, by the EFF, three months or four months after your, their own resolution on land was passed. You will recall that that issue was very strongly debated during the, the conference. Nazare, yes. it, it almost came to, to exchange blows. of Call blows. It what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually that resolution was passed and it was passed by a very substantial majority. Mm. So it is definitely mainstream ANC policy, the expropriation of land without compensation. Yeah. Now, we are, and when I say we, I talk about one of the groups that I belong to, which is the Gauteng Radical Economic Transformation President Zuma Support Group. Yeah. We are concerned that we are moving too slow yeah. with regards to the issue of land expropriation. Mm. Yes, there's a process going on in Parliament, but it's going slowly. Mm. One of the people who seem to have taken his time to deal with it 
is the, our Minister of Justice, who I'm uh, having a fight with now. Yeah. In fact, but he was the leader. You remember he was the key spokesperson on the land issue ahead of the election. That's correct. And even after the election, he continued to speak on this issue. But we didn't make enough progress. And we should have pushed for this issue as a matter of apex priority. Mm. And that's why we say when we talk about President Jacob Zuma and the manner in which he's being treated, yeah. we cannot just talk about him as an individual. We must talk about the broader issues of radical economic transformation. Yeah. And we must push for the resolutions of the 54th National Conference yeah. to be implemented with speed. All right, after the break, I want us to now focus on that, to say, is there no, is this something wrong there if within the ANC you have to push for your own resolutions to be adopted? I mean, the spread that we saw between the Secretary General, just before you worked there, but we mm. saw, all of us, we saw it, on the Reserve Bank matter, was a big matter of concern, that here are resolutions that have been passed, but it looks like even in the heart of the top six, there are people pulling in different directions. I want you to analyze that for me uh, after the break. We're talking to Carl Niels, having a conversation about all matters national of, of national importance. We're going to be talking about RET straight thereafter. Do stay tuned. Of course, you can send us your views, and we can, uh, the lines are also open throughout the night if you want to talk to us. Stay tuned. All right, our friend talk with uh, Carl Niels continues. Please help me understand, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the ANC in general doesn't like it. When people say the ANC is divided, you know, the, if you want to fight with any ANC member, tell them the ANC is divided. But it's all for there for everyone to see, right? You, there seems to be an issue that I don't know is resolved even as we speak. Because it didn't appear in the sauna of the president, not in any great measure. He talked about the state bank. But it didn't touch on the key issue of the Reserve Bank. And the Reserve Bank has to be, I mean, to put it bluntly, nationalized. Right? Why is there a deadlock on this issue, right? even if it was a resolution of conference in your understanding? JJ, there should be no deadlock. Mm. Absolutely no. Because we have a resolution which clearly says the South African Reserve Bank must be nationalized. Mm. I found it very disconcerting that a senior member of the ANC, our Minister of Finance, yeah. was making remarks as if he was de-campaigning the delegates who were at the 54th National Conference, mm. remarking that they don't understand banking policy, they don't understand finances, etc., etc., yeah. and therefore the resolution was wrong. Mm. The Secretary General of the ANC made a very clear point. He said that every resolution that was adopted at the conference should be implemented. Yes. It is not the right or even the privilege of any member of the ANC, no matter how senior you are, whether you are an NEC member, whether you are an NWC member, a member of the national office bearers, it's not the right of any member of the ANC to try and change the resolutions of any national conference. Yeah. If you want to change them, wait until the next conference, lobby, yeah. try to get a majority and change them. That is the basic rule. Do you think the president is resisting that particular resolution or is afraid that if he is seen to be, uh, uh, to, to be uh, sort of too cozy with that kind of resolution, it will in a sense reverse what he's trying to do on the investment side, on the direct foreign investment side? To you know, I don't analysis. want to pronounce what is going on in the president's mind. Yeah. I'd rather talk about the hard policies. But what I do know is that to nationalize the Reserve Bank is not a strange thing. Yeah. Many countries have done it. Yes. The United Kingdom has done it. The United States has done it. Yeah. So we're not talking here about a radical, even socialist proposal. We're talking about a basic, simple proposal that says, yeah. we as a country of pride, we want our Reserve Bank to be fully under control of our government yeah. and our people. The Reserve That's Bank it. governor, who we spoke to about two weeks ago, says mm. this is a lot of noise, no substance, because in fact, first of all, the, 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 the percentage of people who are private shareholders is so tiny, it's inconsequential, they could never make a decision that would go against 
the, the, the overall majority who own, the, which is the state as a, as, a, as a main shareholder. Secondly, he's saying that where's the money going to come from to pay these people out? Because if they are owning those shares, they have to be paid out for it. And he's saying, we really want to spend money on something that in fact won't make any difference from a point of view of policy, from a point of view of decision making. What's your take on you that? You see, I have a lot of respect for the governor. Mm. But he seems to contradict himself with his first statement that there are not that many shareholders, and then he goes to the second one and says, where will the money come from? Yeah. There are not that many shareholders, so, so the amount of, of money, money that's going to be used for <laughs> nationalization of the shares in the Reserve Bank yeah. is going to be minuscule in terms of the bigger issues that we are faced with. Yeah. But what the governor of the Reserve Bank also doesn't appreciate is perception is reality. And when you have a reserve bank where there are foreigners yeah. who have shares, it undermines the pride and the integrity of your country. So why don't we go through this process? Yeah. Why don't we kill this perception, have the pride to have the reserve bank as ours, and why is the governor so concerned about doing it or any of our ministers, yeah. if it is actually a non-issue. But maybe it's know. also uh, going along the same lines of perception and reality. There are a lot of people, commentators, right, who are saying, if you look at some of the failed states in our continent, <laughs> right, uh, the Reserve Bank has had to be tempted to print money because nobody else was watching. They're not held accountable. They just take instructions from politicians. No, but are you saying now that that small little number of shareholders are now watching and controlling what the Reserve Bank well, is doing? Other the governor saying... himself will feel entirely insulted yeah. if we agree on that. The governor says always that there's independence of the Reserve yes. Bank. And in fact, our own resolution says that we will not tamper yeah. with the independence of the Reserve Bank, but we would like to see the Reserve Bank dealing with critical issues around economic growth, job you think they are not? creation of all of that. You think they, are not? they don't concentrate enough on it. That is the view of many people. You yeah. see, we cannot just singularly concentrate on inflation targeting. If we do that, we leave a whole lot of other issues around economic growth, especially the creation of jobs, yeah. which should also be part but of the mandate that so and ambit that's of the Reserve Bank. not in bank. place to make economic, uh, you know, the economy boom, right? That if they just continued, and he gave an a, analogy of a road, that if you simply increase the speed limit on a road so that you can go mm -hmm. faster, when there are potholes, there are roads that are, that are not fixed and so on, you are headed for disaster. In other words, you, these things go together. Surely that's a reasonable proposition? Of course. And we are not asking to go and drive 200 kilometers on a little yeah. farm road with potholes. Yeah. We are asking for other issues to be brought into the equation. Yeah. That is like saying, perhaps I don't have the right shock absorbers on my car. Let's bring that issue also into the okay, equation, okay, not yeah. just worried about what kind of petrol I put in my tank. Yeah. So let's have a broader mandate yeah. so that we understand the complexity of the dynamics that inform the South African economy. Yeah. Do you think that there is a weakness in terms of the deployment system of the ANC in that it seems that once people are deployed, they tend to take a life of their own or they, 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 they seem to sing their own tune? If you look at, listen to your Minister of Finance, you, would, you think that he's, he's <laughs> probably not a deployee. Mm. It, it, it's like, I don't need you guys. I'm a Minister of Finance, just go away. So release his own paper without consulting your, 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 your what do you call it, your, 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 your consult to your SACP and so on, right? And you see, I don't have a problem with deployment as a principle. Yeah, but is the deployment and we must understand. effective? Is it effective at the moment? No, but listen, because we often talk as if these things only happen in our own country. We may not hear the same words being used in the United States, United yeah. Kingdom and Germany. But deployment, I promise you, take place there too. No, sure. It happens because political parties will put people in place yeah. that they are comfortable with and who are their members and who will follow their policies. Absolutely. That is rational. Yeah. It is, it is yeah, a sensible thing to do. But, yeah. but 
What we mustn't do is to have people with individualistic tendencies mm. who start thinking that they and their personalities are bigger than the, than the political party that they represent. And that's when it happens that you say, ah, well, the Reserve Bank resolution is a useless resolution yeah. because I believe I'm more knowledgeable and better. Yeah. than the members of the ANC were delegates who took that decision. Yeah. That kind of tendency is what we but must that address, like not necessarily deployment. Would you say so? Is, is there ill discipline within the NEC? Because it looks like all of you are having their different scripts. You switch on the radio, uh, you know, uh, 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 Mahumapil is speaking on the left. <laughs> you switch on, Pule is issuing a statement saying, oh, please keep quiet. <laughs> are you worried about this so-called message ill discipline, Ka? You see, it's again a combination and a balance. On the one hand, yes, we must try to pull together in the same direction. Yeah. On the other hand, we cannot kill the idea of also having a democratic discussion. And internal yeah. democracy in the ANC is critical. It's crucial, yeah. So we must have a debate. But it also depends on how you do the debate. If you have a debate where you are arrogant and dismissive of your fellow comrades, yeah. then you're going to cause divisiveness. If you are triumphalist, yeah. and unfortunately, let me be honest with you, there are some comrades after the 54th conference yeah. who emerged triumphalist. We've mm. beaten you. Yeah. And I looked at them and I said, but comrades, we always had contestations in the ANC. Mm. But at the end of the conference, we say those contestations are over. We pull together. Yeah. That is what unity will eventually bring to us. Pull together. Yeah. Don't be triumphalist. Don't try to purge people. Don't try to then continue to talk about the so-called NDZ group or the CR17 yeah. group. We are no longer CR17 in NDZ. But we it, are but, ANC. Yeah, but, but, but it but, still but, sounds so, isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't it still sound like we are before Nazarek? Take RET, for example. Mm. The, the reality is that was the slogan used by NDZ. But, and that is why I gave you three buts, yeah. but at the conference, yeah. RET was adopted as a resolution of the whole conference, of the whole conference and therefore of the whole ANC. Yeah. And that is why it's so wrong. When Minister Lamola a week ago yeah. at an ANC meeting in Midrand said there's this RET group that yeah. is different from the rest of the ANC, that is not the mainstream RET. That is bollocks, man. Yeah. The RET is the backbone, the economic policy program of the yeah. ANC. I, as a member of the African National Congress, was there at the conference. Many of us who are now talking about RET and pushing for those resolutions. We're yeah. delegates. So how can Minister Lamola say that we are a separate factional group? Yeah. We are the core. We were there. We pushed for that yeah. resolution. We managed to gain the majority yeah. vote. The resolution was passed. So we are mainstream. But if we talk about the ideal vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the reality, yeah. the reality seems to me, and please help me to understand it, seems to me that RET is being labeled right, as a faction, right, as a factional uh, tendency. Why? Because if you look at the, the sauna, uh, unless uh, I fell asleep somewhere during it <laughs> because it was so long, but I didn't hear the president say radical economic transformation is coming, we're going to do this, or this length thing we're doing is, is as, a, as, as a pillar of RET. This ESCOM mm. this unbundling is as a pillar of RET, etc. Let's, let's be fair about it. It doesn't feature in the president's lingo at all, despite that, in fact, even he tried to use it ahead of Nazarek at some point. And people were showing, oh, the, now there's a new definition of RET by Ramaphosa. And another way, I think he spoke at the BMF conference and talked mm. about RET. Mm. But mm. frankly, since then, he doesn't talk about it. How can a leader of your party not articulate your, what you call a central economic policy? Surely, therefore, Carl, right, mm. in practice, RET has been marginalized, right? Not as a mainstream of what ANC is trying to do. Look, I would have loved to have heard more about RET in the SONA. Yeah. But the challenge is ultimately going to be whether the implementation of what was said in the SONA is contributing to radical economic okay. transformation. Okay. So let's give the president that little bit of a benefit of a doubt. Yeah. Yeah? But at the same time, you're correct to say, 
we are concerned that RET has not been made to the upfront position that it deserves mm. to have. To we are deeply concerned message, about it. So to speak. Because that is, as I told you several times during this interview, yeah. that is indeed the economic policy program of the ANC. So when you hear me and other comrades yeah. complaining that RET has to be more upfront, that RET has to be implemented, and we list them, expropriation of land, nationalization of the Reserve Bank, the financial institutions has to change. I can go on and on. Yes. We are not talking factionalism. We are talking ANC core policy that yeah. has to be implemented. And the Secretary General of the ANC said, those policies must be implemented. Okay, I have to take a break. But after the break, I want you to explain to me. You spoke to my colleague Mbali Tetan, and we showed a, a clip mm. earlier before you got here, where you said that RET, uh, uh, RET uh, forum or, or grouping that you have formed, right, it's mainstream ANC. You have very clear to say, man. I want you to explain to me what that means, because if it's mainstream ANC, why would there have been a need to form a separate support group? Shouldn't the ANC structures throw their way behind all its leaders, current and, and previous, uh, if they are going through difficulties, if they are being uh, harassed or persecuted the same way that they did in 2009. Uh, NEC sat down and said, Zuma has been per uh, persecuted, not prosecuted, if you record. They didn't form a separate group mm. uh, that was mainstream ANC. The ANC brought its weight behind him. Why is that not happening? Why do you need to form an RET support group for President Zuma? We'll talk about that after the break so that you can make me understand. Uh, we're talking to Carl Newhouse. You can, also, of course, send us your views as well on all the platforms. So our WhatsApp line uh, is available for that. You can also tweet us uh, at JJ Tawani at Newsroom 405. We'll also be taking a break, your, your calls straight after the break. Let's take a break now. All right, our frank conversation with uh, Carl Niels continues. Lindy, what's happening on social media there? Lindy. All right, JJ, thanks for that. I thought you were crossing to me straight away. I am standing at the wall to bring us some uh, viewer reactions to the conversation we're having this evening. Yes. Let's take a look at that, JJ. Blessing saying, Jacob Zuma was infiltrated because of greediness and lack of foresight. How on earth can you, together with foreigners like the Guptas, steal your own country's wealth? Are there millions of poor people, depending on the state to survive? What hero asked Blessings? He was stealing public funds. Shame. Let's take a look at what Zueli has to say this evening. Some people are being celebrated for not trusting our medical facilities and they were part of not making our facilities better. Cuba is the place to go, but my fear, my fear most is that the masses who went to the OR Tambo International Airport can't even afford groceries. Mm. Another tweet here saying, what is important is that our former president is healthy. Others have done the worst and continue to hurt us. He fought for human rights as well as dignity. A tweet from Marcel Samaila saying there is no longer any doubt that the ANC is divided into two parts, JJ. The one group calling itself the RET forces clearly coalesces around Jacob Zuma as well as Ace Mahashule and other state capture looters. The other is led by Ramaphosa. It's tough, really tough. Let's watch and learn. The final tweet coming in in the form of a question, and I think that's the question I'm posing this evening, uh, JJ, as you have this discussion. President Jacob Zuma has joined a long list of African leaders who've been seeking medical attention abroad. Does this uh, mean that South Africa is incapable of offering world-class medical expertise for its citizens? Of course, JJ, you'll know that uh, the former president now joins the long list of presidents and former presidents of countries like Nigeria, countries like Angola, Benin, Zimbabwe as well. What does this really mean? Is it telling for a president who's, yeah. you know, led over a country for about nine years and was the deputy president before, um, you know, he joins a list of, of presidents and former presidents who have even gone and passed away in foreign countries yeah. seeking that medical treatment. Is it telling? What does that say about, yeah. you know, the former president's take on South Africa's yeah. uh, health facilities? It's interesting, Lindy, what you're saying, because uh, actually a number of heads of states have come to South Africa. Mm. To, to receive medical attention. One, one military hospital uh, seems to be a favorite uh, uh, stopover for some leaders in the continent. Of course, uh, Nelson Mandela has been treated there throughout uh, his last years. So I don't think there could potentially be anything wrong with one military hospital, Lindy.
And I mean, <laughs> JJ, you look at the Prime Minister of Lesotho, who was in South Africa yeah. just last week when he was supposed to be in court. And it seems, you know, when you look, especially at the, the former presidents or the presidents who are kind of in like political trouble, yeah. um, you know, and then it, it, it almost seems like they're running away from their responsibilities um, and, and being accountable um, and going to seek medical attention. And we're not saying, you know, that the president is not sick. We're just simply asking, you know, why this time and why is it not in South Africa where that medical attention is being seeked? It's over to you, JJ. All right, uh, Lindy and Sarah, they're giving us what's happening on social media. Let's just get straight into it. The Cuba thing, has the president or the former president, uh, you know, sat with you in terms of just taking you into his confidence about what the, the whole Cuba thing is, as opposed to what Lindy is saying, that one military hospital, that's where the heads of state uh, seems to get good medical attention there, Carl. Look, there is absolutely no so-called lack of trust from President Zuma in the medical yeah. fraternity and the medical facilities in yeah. South Africa. That's not the case. Okay. President Zuma went to Cuba because of a particular illness that he's faced with. And because of that particular illness, it was identified that in Cuba there are specific expertise and, and, that can, and specialization that can address that. I see. Now, I, see. I say to you a particular illness, and of course the logical question, and I've had that question asked to me a number of times in the last two days, what is the illness? Unfortunately, I'm not going to share that. Okay. Because we have to respect the president's the privacy. privacy. The privacy of but him. please, we must understand the president is not in any way raising any doubt about yeah. our medical expertise. I think See. it is a little bit vicious of people to try and say that because yeah. he's never done that. None of us have ever expressed any of our concerns about yeah. what we can achieve in South yeah. Africa. We yeah. know how, well, how good one military hospital it's is. Very good. Very, can I link that though to the court issue? You are very vicious in saying that the courts <laughs> are, 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 are ill-treating Zoom. So in fact, you're very angry that he's now got a warrant of arrest and so on. But let's, let's, let's say, uh, be a bit objective now about what was on the table. You come to court, right, mm -hmm. without your client and say, my client is sick. Mm -hmm. It's like coming to work or I don't come to work. And then they say, but why are we not at work? And I say, no, well, I was sick. Then here's a medical note. Mm. Logically, the court must then examine that medical note for authenticity, isn't it? Yeah. They now found that this note, it was scribbled, it was whatever else, it was, uh, there were defaults about it. And for me, looking outside, in terms of not being privy to the detail of mm. exactly what was wrong with the, with the note, I, I could then conclude to say, then it means that all they are saying, that's why they have suspended or stayed that warrant, that bring a proper note, bring your doctors to explain this, so that we can move on. Because I'm sure many people get their court dates postponed. It's not a new thing in our legal system. You come to court, you say, oh, can I have a postponement because my client is not well? In, in some instances, the court even assign a doctor. If you come and say, oh, I'm not mentally well, they say, mm -hmm. well, the doctor, let the doctor tell us whether indeed, right, uh, uh, this person is not fit to stand trial because of his medical condition. Why does okay. it sound as if they, they, there's, there's some way in your argument that he, he needed to have been treated differently from any ordinary citizen who produced a note that looked dodgy, right? And the court said, no, we don't like this note because it, it misses this, it doesn't have this. Look, you're going to have to give me some time to explain this. Please explain it. First of all, you must understand context. Hmm. When anyone comes to present to your work or wherever yeah. a sick note, mm. there's a context. Okay. And the person who looks at that sick note says, well, here's JJ, you know, this is a guy who drinks on a Friday night, yeah. he has got the babalas, and because of that he doesn't pitch on the Monday morning. Yeah. So we are a little bit doubtful about it. Yeah. But here's Carl, this is a guy who doesn't drink, He's an upright citizen. He goes to church on a Sunday. Yeah. Monday morning, he's always on the dot yeah. at work. Now, this is the kind of person that the judge was examining. Not JJ, but Carl. Because President Zuma, for 15 years, attended every single court hearing. Yeah. Religiously. Respecting the court to the T. Mm. For the first time... His lawyers come and say, you know, our client is ill. 
Here's a note. Okay, there's some issues with the note. The judge looks at it. The judge says, well, I'm dealing with an elderly statesman. Mm. He's 77 years old. It's not a flight risk. Mm. His lawyers are here. They are presenting a note. Okay, perhaps I don't like the fact that the date has been changed or whatever, but I understand the context. And in the context, I will understand that this man is not trying to flee. I also know, because I read newspapers like everyone else, that for the last number of months he's not been well. I read about it in the newspapers. I also heard that for the first time he did not attend to the January the 8th statement of the ANC. Also not the last number of NEC meetings of the ANC and not the ANC Le Chotla. Extraordinary for him not to attend because he's a diligent member of the ANC. He will fly from any place in the world to come and attend those meetings. So here I see there is definitely a problem with this man's health. Now, why would I then issue a warrant, warrant of arrest, arrest, even if I suspend it? You see, our concern is that warrant of arrest is not just that piece of paper. Not just a warrant of arrest. It's an instrument of vilification. Mm. It is a tool that can be used, and it has been used in the media and the newspapers, both locally and internationally, yeah. to say now President Zuma has been declared a fugitive of justice. That is a humiliation. Now, that's the one context. Let's go to the second one, why we get so angry. Mm. 22 years ago, you know him, Bulalani Nguka, advocate Bulalani Nguka, was having a secret press conference, a briefing, where he was whispering in the ears of some uh, journalists, you know, I've got prima facie evidence against Jacob Zuma, Then President Zuma was the deputy president, but I'm not going to use it, but you must understand he's actually guilty. Trying to damage the president's reputation. Then, let's jump forward a little bit later. We're getting close to the Polokwani conference, national conference of the ANC in 2007. Just before the conference, the head of the Scorpions on the telephone, two Bulalani Luka, two other politicians. What will be the best, the best time timing. Yeah. to do this arrest, to do this charging and potential arrest to damage President Zuma's political career yeah. to the most? Now, if you take all that context and then you arrive at that court yeah. on the 4th of February and here the judge issues that yeah. particular warrant of arrest, you think surely you link. understand, you link it all. Yeah. It's logical. All right. And then... Our supporters and millions of people are saying, hi, Connor, we've had enough. Why is this elderly statesman being treated in this manner over and over again? This is the last straw that breaks the camel's back. That's why you see the number of people that came to our press conference. That's why you see the large crowd of people at Oatambo Airport yesterday. And that's why you're going to see even a larger crowd marching to the ANC's offices on the 4th of May, and on the 6th of May, a huge crowd will be outside the Peter Maritzburg High Court. After the break, I want us to zone into that. I'm glad you painted that Mm. context, because there's another context, right? This court case, the one that he missed, is different from all the others he has attended over the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. In the simple term that over the last 15 years, there are a number of court cases where he went to argue not to be prosecuted, mm-hmm. despite that he went to court. You mm-hmm. are saying, let this thing be thrown out because of the things we've raised in the second context, mm-hmm. right? The conspiracy around Bulelani and whoever else, the spy tapes, etc., etc. But those have been defeated in court now, right? Making way for him to now be prosecuted. This court case that's, that, that is supposed to be happening is no longer, uh, you know, talks about talks. It's, uh, it's, it's now to say that they have been asking for. Right. But you're also aware that there's, of course, another application appeal on the whole issue of the stay of prosecution. Oh, no. Can we, this, this, then he'll never stay trial. Man. No, they, no, no. You must, must be aware go, of man, that. Once and for all. 
that that <laughs> process is on the go. All right. And we'll talk about that after the break. I'll come back to you. And take one or two calls. But I would like you to address that to say mm. maybe the context of say, hey, this guy has been running away too many, too many times. Now it's time to answer. But you are telling me it's going to appeal again. All right. Let's take uh, the break. And after the break, Archie is standing by our first caller to engage us. Let's take a break. All right, uh, we are continuing and rounding off our conversation. With, uh, there'll never be enough time to talk to Carl Niels, but uh, he's just agreed he'll, he'll be back. So uh, we, we unfortunately have a, a limited time left. We'll take one or two calls and then we round off the conversation. Uh, Archie, in Melkhout Fontaine, in the Western Cape. Good evening. Good evening, JJ. Thanks for taking my call. Go for it. Yes, JJ, uh, I've been listening to Mr. Nihal's attentively, and yes. I've been following his statement yeah. with regard to the Haiti uh, issue. Mm. Mr. Mia and Mr. Nihal are very selective and economical about issues when it comes to their mission, mm. because they are representing the minority, mm. which are not part of the, directly part of the team. Yes, in Navarre, it was adopted that RIT should be the core yes. of the team of the conference. But now, when he started talking to me, he said the part that is represented in Gauteng, yeah. not Gauteng SNT. And Mr. Nihau himself has been subject to controversial uh, 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 or, 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 or actions against the law. So I find it very difficult. Why is he so adamant in defending the former president? Because when things are not going right in the country, because he mentioned under Cabo Gaiki, we had the chance to expropriate the land, we had the chance to do things. But now, here is the president that is naming them, Mr. Bates. Let's look at the record. Under Mbeki, how corrupting the, 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 the state of corruption compared to the reign of Jacob Zuma which Nihau was directly part and linked to the president of the country under the reign of Jacob Duke. So now it's very suspicious. Why now Mr. Nihau and those, you know, they are using for the city. Those people who are at the airport there to welcome the president there, mm. they were just people who were back there and some, maybe given some things even. But now, my issue here, JJ, yes. I like what you've been asking him. You've been direct with him and never been by us, as always. You ask him, what is it that is in for him as a person? Because he's not representing the ANP. He must just come out and tell us whose agenda is he running with. Because, yes, we understand that RIT is part of the ANP. But this forum that they had to form outside the ANC, mm. and now, when he's speaking to you, what platform to be or what cap is he wearing now? Is he wearing the cap of the ANC? Is he delegated by the ANC to come and speak on behalf of the ANC? Or is he speaking for the minority? Because I'm confused today. So you're saying the RET is a minority. That. Okay, Archie, don't go. Stay on the line. A brief response to, to that. Uh, of course, there are people are concerned that RET, and I asked earlier on before we went to a break, mm. the RET formation is not a mainstream ANC structure. It's not an ANC structure. It's a support group, right? And, 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 and I, I want you to address whether it, it, it's so because you feel that the, you, you, you need a refuge, another refuge other than the normal structures, the Gauteng has a PEC, right? Mm. There are branches, there are regions, etc., right? That are doing quite a good, I mean, if you look at what the ANC Swan is doing, I think they're doing quite a, a decent job of being an opposition there, you know? Mm. The, the Gauteng region of the ANC is taken over now the metro. So you have got structures in the ground that can support whatever program of the ANC. Why the need for this? Yes, you answer what Archie said. The need for the RET support group separately from ANC structures. Well, first of all, it is not a separate structure. I'm not first and foremost a member of this group, the RET support group for President Jacob Zuma. You are not a member. I am part of that group, but my membership and my loyalty in the first instance yeah. is the African National Congress. I've signed. Yeah. I have a membership card. I've been a member of the ANC for the last 41 years, yeah. uninterrupted, in good standing. So this group is a lobby group. 
There's nothing wrong with lobbying within an organization to say, hey, I'm a little bit worried here, or I'm very worried. Yeah. My organization seems to steer away yeah. from what the mainstream policy positions it's should well be. About, yeah. Now, let us engage with our leadership. Let us ask our leadership to come back to those core values. I told you the core values about expropriation of land. Okay. What is set out in the Freedom Charter? What stands in the resolutions of the 54th National Conference? Yeah. Nothing wrong with ANC members speaking as ANC members, yeah. raising those So issues. the lobby group, are there ANC members in this lobby group? No, not in this group where we are at the Gauteng Economic, Radical Economic Transformation Support Group for President Zuma. Yeah, there are but not, 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 there. not in that Gauteng group. Yeah. But there are many NEC members who associate themselves with what we are saying. Yeah. They were there yesterday at OR Tambo International Airport. You saw them, Mr. Benzizwane. Yeah. You saw some of the other members of the NEC who were there. So it is not a matter that NEC members feel that they are now dealing here with a faction. Yeah. or a group outside the ANC. I maintain, JJ, and also to our caller, Archie, yeah. I maintain that radical economic transformation is the core of the ANC's economic policy program, and we are the core of what the ANC should be. So yeah. we are arguing, so you deny we are that lobbying this, this for the ANC the to regain. The lobby group is a minority. No, no, listen. We are arguing and we are lobbying for the ANC to regain yeah. its revolutionary heart. By that I'm not saying we are a minority. I'm confident that we are the majority of the ANC. Okay. Why am I confident of that? Because it was the delegates of the branches of the ANC that passed those pro-RET resolutions at the 54th National Conference. At the end of the day, the ANC is nothing but the membership of the ANC, the yeah. grassroots members. And the vast majority of those members through their delegates have yeah. spoken. They said, we want radical right. economic transformation. Uh, uh, Archie, you still there? Archie? All right, looks like Archie. Hello? Archie, your, your last bite, briefly, please. All right, Archie, Archie decided to, to, to leave there. Uh, with the remaining time, I want some quick answers to a few mm -hmm. things. One, do you believe right, that, that there is a, a case to be answered by President Zuma in as far as state capture is concerned? I want a straightforward answer from you. You know, again, my concern is yeah. that we cannot talk about these issues outside context. Let me remind you what President Zuma said when he actually brought this State Capture Commission into being, because yeah. he was then still president. Yes. He said, I must warn you to be very careful about this instrument that I'm now putting in place. Yeah. Because this instrument can mislead us about what the real state capture is. Mm. And JJ, we cannot talk about state capture in South Africa without talking about colonialism, yeah. without talking about how white companies came about, white monopoly, yeah. capitalist companies came about out of that colonial theft yeah. of the land and in general property in South Africa. Yeah. If I cannot talk about the role of the Oppenheimers, if I cannot talk about Christo Wiese and the Johann Rupert and all the others, including Stephen Kosef, yeah then I'm not talking about state capture. Yeah. Then I'm talking about something else. And yeah. the thing we must be careful about... But it's not either or, is no, it? No, no. It's, it's not either, either and. It's not Meaning either or. Whatever theft... But it should be... By whoever. It should be It must and. be interrogated. It should include everything. Yeah. And it mustn't be used as a way to cover up yeah. the real huge state capture. Yeah. And the real huge state capture, whether we like the Guptas or not, yeah. we're not the Guptas. Yeah. Compared... To Johann Rupert, the Guptas were running a spaza shop. Yeah. So please, let's not concentrate here on the spaza shop while we've got this huge capitalist monster 
that has been in control of the right, South African you, you saw economy. what happened in the state capture that suddenly we had the, the Watsons who seem to have been running an entire operation of bribery, right? Mm. Left, right and center. So I agree with you that, you know, it doesn't mean that uh, we, if you narrow the terms of reference, the evidence will narrow itself. The evidence clearly will not, uh, will not be... Some hidden. evidence comes My out, question but still why... Remains, though, right? Where is Do you think off? there is some case to answer? In all the 10 years of President Zuma, do you think there's something that he may have gotten wrong, right? In the things that he may have in the heart wanted to do, in the 10 years, if you look at all of them, and you said to me the numbers are, are quite clear about what, what we are facing. 55% unemployment, mm -hmm. sorry, 55% poverty levels, 30% unemployment in narrow definition, right? 14 million people going to bed hungry every day, economy growing at 0%, let's just be frank about it. Hey, the decimals don't matter. Let's, let's deal right? with this. All let's of that accumulated over the last 15 years, not just the 10 years that... Not President just Zuma. under President Zuma. Absolutely. And the economic, international economic yeah. conditions became very difficult yeah. during a period of President Zuma's government. Sure. But what is happening now? We've got the highest unemployment yeah. figures ever. And President Zuma hasn't been president yeah, But don't jump for to two now years. yet, no, no, Carl. No. I want you to... JJ, uh, you please. and I must agree. Let's understand. Can you concede just one thing, yeah. right? That the, 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 the reign of President Zuma, that nine years, was not ideal in many respects, right? Look at the number of people who served under him, like Zwani. I mean, Zwani, Zwani the NC had to reverse his own uh, uh, draft of the mining chart, right? They had to reverse it. Mussolini couldn't get the NHR to be approved, right? You had to wait for the current minister. You must give me a chance to respond to these things. Eh? We, we don't have much time, but I want you to... Yeah, but that's why you shouldn't talk too much and allow no, me no, to No, 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 I have to, because you have talked <laughs> the whole hour. I want you to yeah. just answer just a narrow question, right? Hmm. Is there a case to answer of one sort of or another? In other words, is it useful for Mussolini to go back to state capture? Or must he just write off the whole thing as a... As, as, a, as a futile exercise. The current way in which the State Capture Commission is operating, I don't believe it is useful. Oh my but God, of no, course, really? I don't believe But he it, set it no, up. Listen, and he warned us that the parameters, the narrow parameters which were imposed on him yeah. is going to cause a huge problem for us. And the problem is staring us in the face. Yeah. That's the first thing. Secondly, no president... Yeah is as an individual responsible for everything that happens in the country. 100%. Wait, wait. 100%. Please give me a chance. The ANC as an organization were running our country in the last nine years when President Zuma was president, yeah. not him alone. Yeah. And the deputy president of the ANC at that point was then the deputy president who is now the current yeah. president. Many of the ministers who seem to wax lyrically now about nine wasted years yeah. were senior ministers in that government. So be careful about the nine wasted years. Yeah. And as far as the mining charter of Comrade Musubenzi Zwani is concerned, yeah. I would have loved to have seen some of the things that were in that charter not thrown out. Yeah. We need to have a charter that will empower our people we need to have a charter that will truly make it possible for yeah. our people to own the mining industry. Is there industry. anything you found useful in the State Capture Commission up to so far in terms of uh, shedding the light or sh shining the light on the, the, the corruption that was happening at SOEs, the terrible contracts that were continue to, continuing under Transnet, you know, all of those uh, things, uh, the terrible things that happened as come briefly. Is there anything at all that oh, you yes. think can shed the light in terms of what we need to avoid in the future? The one thing we need to avoid is to use corruption as a political factional tool. Yeah. Because remember, we were having whites marching in the streets of South Africa calling for President Zuma to be removed. Yeah. We were told that all these people in the Zuma government, some names were mentioned, are corrupt. And then the State Capture Commission came and very quickly some of those people who were actually talking about the corruption of others were in trouble. So be careful to use corruption as a factional tool. If you want to deal with corruption, deal with it in a fair way, deal with it across the board, yeah. and the Zondo Commission helped us right. with that. We'll have to leave it there, unfortunately. You, you have to come back.
I will come back. Huh? Thank you. And you must bring the secretary at some point. Well, I'm sure you've asked me the question. I can convey that question <laughs> to Comrade Ace Magashule. Thank you so much. Carl Lea was talking to me. It's, it's never enough, so we'll uh, call him back in, in a few months' time to come and help us understand uh, some of the ongoings in the ANC. Of course, we'll have a series of talking to so many people. We talked to Tokyo Sukhal on Thursday, and I've requested a couple of other people to come through so we can just understand the state of things as we go forward. Of course, a roundtable of the, on the state of the nation carries on uh, after the news. We'll be having uh, various political parties to also weigh in uh, on the state of the nation. So do stay tuned for that.